South Ark Spotlight is brought to you by Maxwell Hardwood Flooring. Maxwell Hardwood Flooring, located in Monticello, has been producing quality, solid, and engineer hardwood flooring for over 28 years. The company and sister companies, Washita Hardwood and Townsend Inc. in Warren, are proud to be providing American-made flooring to distributors and retailers from coast to coast while serving our local communities right here at home. Maxwell Hardwood Flooring, your best start for a great finish. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Reap and you're watching the South Arc Spotlight here on SelenaRiverChronicle.com. This is brought to you by Maxwell Hardwood Flooring. It's a monthly program that we offer uh, that just, just most goes into detail uh, of some local organization or person that's making an impact here in the uh, south, part, south part of Arkansas. Uh, today we've got a very special guest from our local YMCA, Mr. David Ritchie. David, it's great to have you. It's great to be here. I'm very thankful for the opportunity and look forward to our time. Yeah. I, I'm, I've been looking forward to this interview for, for several days since we, we got, you, got you lined up to do it just because the Y was such an inter, inter, integral part mm -hmm. of my childhood, but so many others in this yes. community. I think it's got such a history. Yes, it does. And, you know, the Y um, celebrated 101 years. Uh, this past September, we celebrated 101 years. And so our, attended, our intention was to celebrate 100 years in 2020, but uh, COVID kind of put a damper on, on those plans. And so we didn't want to get another year out and not take the opportunity to at least celebrate uh, such a phenomenal accomplishment uh, for an organization that has been so just pivotal in the life of Warren and Bradley County and, and uh, it's meant so much to so many people. So. The Y indeed is just a great organization that has just a rich history in Warren and Bradley County. Well, we hope not only celebrating those those hundred years, maybe we can have another hundred uh, coming <laughs> That's up. Right. That's we'll just start on That's on right. the next. That's right. Let's let's jump into talking first of all about the boring stuff. How's the Y set up? Is it is it a nonprofit? The Y is a five hundred one three C organization, so we are a nonprofit, and so we exist solely upon donations uh, and those donations come in a number of different formats and ways we have people who uh, just give to the Y out of the benevolence of their heart and then we have people that participate in our annual campaign and we have an in-town campaign and an out-of-town annual campaign uh, those monies are kind of diminishing of late uh, those people are aging out and uh, that, that population that grew up in Warren, that, that hundred year span that we're talking about, those, those uh, kids that grew up in Warren that moved off and were successful, uh, that, that group's diminishing. And so, uh, but anyway, um, it is a 501c3 and we, we get money through donations and then we sell memberships. Uh, you have to be a member at the Y and uh, we don't turn anyone away. But we do sell memberships, and so the gym is a very important part of that aspect. People come to work out there and uh, to swim and to participate in the programs that we have. And so uh, the bulk of our income comes from the sale of memberships. Family, adult, student, senior adult, senior family, uh, various different rates that, that uh, allow us to be able to undertake our day-to-day -day activities. You mentioned that it's a 501c3 organization, so so donations that are are provided to the Y, those those would be tax deductible. Yes, everything's tax deductible. We send out letters all the time acknowledging people's gifts and that they can utilize under IRS laws and regulations. And uh, so it's a great opportunity if you're looking for uh, a tax deductible deduction. It'd be a wonderful opportunity to support the Y. Well, we got the boring stuff out of the way, the structure of the why necessarily. Let's jump into some of the fun stuff. For people here who are local um, that are looking for, for activities or, or ways to work out, what, what programs for both youth and adults does the why offer? I know that, that runs a pretty large yeah. gambit. Well, if we were to talk about memberships, I kind of mentioned some of those, but in relationship to working out. So, you know, you can have a family membership, um, an adult membership, a student membership. We have a few student memberships, quite a few actually, and and uh, we have a senior adult and senior family. And so, 
those folks can take part in anything that the Y offers as far as in, during our business operating hours. They come in, they work out, um, they lift weights, they do cardio, uh, they participate in those activities. We have senior adult classes, we have um, active, uh, active older adults taught by Susan Roberts, we have uh, Powerball taught by um, Linda Gardner. And so those are things that are going on throughout the week. Um, as you get a little younger in age, we also, for our members, we have uh, Stacy Stone, who is our fitness director and our business manager. She teaches a class as well, and uh, uh, that's a little bit more geared toward younger people. Um, but the age frame is, is you know, is varied. I mean, we have older, older folk, older ladies that come to that and people that come to that class as well as younger. And so that's the membership side of things. As far as programs outside of that, regardless if you're a member or a non-member as, as they're referred to, uh, the Y runs all the peewee programs for the community of Warren. And so throughout the year we'll be doing, right now we're doing basketball. And so, uh, and then we're getting ready to start promoting and registration for baseball and softball, t-ball, junior t-ball, t-ball, baseball, and softball. Something that's sort of a rite of passage exactly. for, for kids around exactly. here. Baseball and softball are a really big deal as far as our numbers. It's probably the largest program that we offer throughout the year. We'll have upwards of 150 kids that'll participate in that program. And, and we really, wish we had more kids uh, so we could run our own league, but we really don't have enough kids to run our own league anymore like the Y used to. Uh, so we, ha we partner uh, regionally with Monticello, and so we join up in their league, and so our baseball and softballs played in Monticello, and, but our junior T-ball and T-balls all played here uh, at the sports complex. We kind of have a, a, an agreement, a partnership with the city and so all the games are played out at the sports complex now. And so, so we're getting ready for that, and that's a big deal. And then as soon as uh, baseball gets started, we'll segue into swim team, and we'll start registrations for swim team, which is another uh, big, highly uh, supported program uh, that is just you know loved by so many. Uh, the swim team's a big part of our summer big part of our pool operations. You know, we have a seasonal pool. It's a 25 meter pool. And so uh, we'll hold uh, swim meets, usually two a year, two a summer, uh, along with, you know, the activities of the pool being open on a daily basis and for, for family swim and things of that nature. And if people haven't been been uh, in the downtown area around the Y when those swim meets are happening, those are those are big occurrences. I don't think people realize how many folks that brings into town. It's, it's a big deal. We're, we're part of uh, SASA, South Arkansas Swim Association, and that takes in El Dorado, Monticello, mm -hmm. Warren, obviously, uh, Pine Bluff, Mina has even come over and participated in it. That's way, it's far away, but they have also been part of, part of that as well. Texarkana, uh, I know I'm leaving someone out. El Dorado, I guess I mentioned them. Um, Magnolia in the past. So when we have a swim meet and all of those teams come, it's a huge deal. And in fact, I often affectionately refer to it as a swim village. It seems like when they come, and I've got on top of the wine, taking pictures down below and it's just uh, they put up their tents and it's just an all-day affair it's a really big deal it's like a festival on yeah, into yeah, itself that's right and, and so it's a great time and then after swim uh, the next thing that's on the horizon would be cheerleading and mm. tackle football and flag football and those are also big programs uh, football, as you know, is a very big part of Warren sure. and, and a part of our identity and part of our lives here. And so uh, those are uh, the programs that we offer and that take place. And in addition to that, we offer a weekly gymnastics class, uh, and Mary Ramsey teaches that. That's a great job. And uh, we have and, and hope to get it going again, but we have offered soccer mm -hmm. and have 
also partnered with Monticello in that process of, of undertaking a soccer program. But we haven't been able to do that the last few years. And so I've been working with the, I've been talking, have had some discussions with the soccer coach here at Warren and uh, the possibility of maybe trying to get something going for that. So, but That right brings now, up a, an interesting point. Um, so many of, of the successful high school teams we've had over the, over the last two decades um, I've talked this over with, with, with my father, of course, and on road trips as we're going to football games. But so many of those, so many of those teams really, really built a, a friendship at the Y level. That's where yeah, those, that's the, right. that success really started, exactly. I think. And, you know, we have uh, – Warren is blessed with, uh, I believe, a great athletic program. And, and we've had a very successful football program uh, in our community as well as, you know, other sports too. I don't want to detract from them. Um, most of those kids that are playing on a high school level, junior high or high school level, they all played at the Y. And those that have had the privilege of going on to play at a collegiate level or, or even a professional level, which we've been blessed to have a few that have been able to do that, all of them played at the Y. And so it's a tribute to, to um, you know, our community and what we're trying to do. and. And, you know, if you were to look at our Y teams, sometimes our, my staff and I, Bart, Bart uh, Goodwin is uh, my sports director, and we s sometimes sit back and talk. And on a Y level and in the leagues that we're in, we may not be very successful, but as far as win-loss ratio, but, but they're being taught fundamentals. They're being taught basics in those sports. And, and when they get on that, junior high high school level we've just had such great success and so mm -hmm. i believe the why plays a role in that a part in that of the just some of the fundamentals and foundation that's developed there for those athletes as they grow up in this community so the programs you know we have the membership side of things and that incorporates quite a bit and then we have you know the programs and along as far as the peewee uh, stuff that we do in the community. So things, things, there's things offered for youth and adults, mm -hmm. uh, variety of programs. How does a person become a member? Well, we have, um, first of all, we don't turn anyone away, regardless of ability to pay. So let's say a family membership right now is $36 a month, which I believe is pretty cheap. And sure. there's a ratio that we use to develop that, that figure. And so you, I don't want to bore you, but I'll just share it with <laughs> sure. you. you. You take the median income of Bradley County, which right now is about a little bit above $43,000. And then the YUSA percentage is 1.3%. You multiply that out, you get about $45. And so our Y doesn't, more than likely from YUSA's perspective, should we ever charge more than $45 or $46 for a membership. Mm -hmm. So right now our membership is $36. And... And so if a person cannot pay that uh, and they could benefit from a membership, and I can't think of anybody that wouldn't benefit from a membership, but uh, if they can't pay, then they come in and they, um, well, let me just back up. If they want a membership, they come in, they get a membership application and they choose what level membership they want, a family membership, or maybe they just want an adult membership. They fill that out, they're put in our system, uh, they're issued a card, a membership card, which allows them access uh, to the building. If in the process of filling out that paperwork, they have a need because of maybe their financial situation or their circumstances that they're in um, that, that they can't do anything about, and, but yet they could benefit from having a Y membership, they need a Y membership. And we also have a scholarship application. It kind of follows a sliding scale uh, depending upon how many members in the family, what kind of income they have, and then we base, we use that scale to base uh, what their membership fee might be. So, you know, we we love it when people, we just love it when people come and join. And and I know that can be a humbling thing for a, an individual or a dad or a mom to say, hey, we kind of things are kind of tight right now, or, you know, I've lost my job. and. Uh, or, you know, I want my kids to be involved, but yet we can't afford. And so the, the scholarships that are available are, um, 
across the board. So it's not just on the membership side it, for the fitness gym and the basketball court and the things of that nature, or the swimming pool during the summer. It's also on the peewee side, the program side. So if, if a family can't pay the $60 for a basketball registration, then we do the same scholarship thing. We, we just don't turn anyone away. And it's not like we have some money out there and a fund somewhere that we're drawing from. We just discount that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and um, um, for us in the history of the Y and the time that I've been there as the CEO since 2015, we've never been able to, we've never missed paying an electric bill or a gas bill or we've never uh, had a time where we couldn't pay or meet payroll. Uh, and and so what I'm saying, I, sh I bring that in to say that the Y is a Christian organization. It's a nonprofit organization, but it's a Christian organization, and we have a we have a strong Christian basis and foundation upon which we stand, and and we trust the Lord to make provision for us. And so when somebody has a need they can't afford a membership or they can't afford the fee or the complete fee for a, a program, um, nobody's turned away. Um, and so we're, we're glad to be able to do that. So you just come to the Y and uh, you can get the membership application, the scholarship information, the registration forms, everything's there. We're really not at a place to be able to do things online just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, would love to be able to do that at some point, but just haven't got got there. Sure. So, well, I, I would imagine with with that type of uh, need in terms of providing financial assistance to to some some uh, potential members, you've obviously got to raise some funds throughout the year. Yes. What annual events does, is the Y currently? Um, putting on, pursuing. Uh, I know the radio auction is obviously a big one, but w w the radio auction, explain a little bit about how that works and what other events are you guys involved in? Jimmy Sledge, a uh, local businessman in town, um, started the radio auction, um, I think in 2008, I believe, if, or it might, might have been 2004, but it doesn't matter. He started it and it was to raise money to do some uh, reworking of some of the ditches that go around the Y for the drainage of water. Uh, when, it, when it rains and we get a heavy rain, there's the potential and the threat of flooding in the area where the Y is. So they started the radio auction to raise money to be able to do that, and it was such a success that it's something that we've done every year. Mm -hmm. And so people make donations of items. For instance, you donate, the Saline River Chronicle donates an ad and then we auction that off. And so, and that money comes to us and it's usually anywhere from 8,500 to as much as almost $12,000 since I've been here. Um, and that money goes to help us get through the rest of the year. The radio auction's always in November. It's, it's the Friday after the, lost, the last Lumberjack football game, <laughs> which is always on a Thursday night. And sure. so we have a radio auction the next day and uh, it's a great, it's a great boost for us to be able to finish the year financially. We have our annual campaign, which I've already mentioned, and there's an in-town and out-of-town, uh, you know, commitments that come uh, through the campaign. And sometimes that can be anywhere from about thirty to $45,000. We have the YMCA Foundation, which is a separate entity, but yet related to the Y, and uh, their sole existence is to um, garner money and funds and invest that and then they pay the Y quarterly the inve the income off of that, the interest income that, that that makes. Right now the stock market's not doing very well right. and so uh, but anyway there have been times that it's done really well and so uh, so that's a great help to us as well. So if you were to look at on the contribution side of things that's how some of those money comes in mm -hmm. to help us. During baseball Swim team as well. Uh, certain businesses will buy banners, or they'll put their business name on a on the sleeve of a uniform, uh, a baseball uniform or a softball uniform. Those types of things, and then um, you know that money comes in. And then when you couple all of that with the sale of memberships, that's makes up our budget. 
So, David, thank you so much for coming in. Unfortunately, we we were run out of time. This this program always seems like it just flies by. But <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I do want to mention to all of our viewers, of course, the Y does have a website, but obviously a Facebook page where if you yes. want information, the phone number, right. address. Uh, whatnot, uh, they can find all of that there. Yeah. But um, once again, thank you so much for stopping by. And I know the community is uh, not only proud, but but um, but very happy to have the support of, of, of our local Y. Well, thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate that. And you know, the Y is a great organization. We have a great board, and and I, and I have a great staff. And so, if if there's anything positive that's going on, it's because of their sacrificial service and work in this community. And I'm I'm glad that we're able to do that. Well, thank you. And again, thank you to all of our viewers for for tuning in today here on uh, on SelenaRiverChronicle.com. Be sure to check with us next month for another edition of uh, South Ark Spotlight brought to you by Maxwell Hardwood Flooring. Have a great day.